night. It is a three-day weekend and decided to uh, throw up a little bit of a live stream. I actually want to enjoy this beer that I'm going to check out here in a second from Deschutes. It is their Fresh Haze IPA and Deschutes out of Bend, Oregon is a, a nice brewery that I've had a few beers from. This one actually comes in at 6.5% ABV, 45 IBU. Have not had this one yet, so I heard about this one coming out. Figured if I saw it, why not give it a shot? And uh, that's what happened. On the can, intensely juicy, irresistibly hazy, freshly squeezed. No fruit was harmed in the making of this beer since 1988. There again. I'll hold it back a little further. You might be losing it in my orange shirt that I got on, but uh, if I can keep it straight. There we go. Showing the squeeze of the hop. What's up, Gilbert? How you doing, my friend? So this is a 19.2 ounce can packaged on 11 7 19. So we do have a date on there. Dates do matter. So I'm always happy when a brewery does put one on. Cheers, Vanessa. Happy to see you. Hopefully you're having a nice Friday as well. Wow. This one definitely goes to that orange collar. Almost a little too much on the pour. Ooh. Get a nice sense of the orange as well. Has an orange juice feel to it. Nice thick head there. About two and a half finger. Some good foaminess. Should lace the glass nicely. Color wise, it doesn't come through as crisp and clear on the camera, but it has a nice kind of orange drink type color to it, I guess I would say. A little bit brighter and vibrant. And then we got haze all running through the beer. Has the fresh squeeze drinking IPAs tonight. You had them? Nice feel of the hops coming off. A little bit of that, you know, it's overused, that dank, resiny type feel to it. But a nice quality of the hop. Pretty aromatic. Get a little bit of a pininess in there. But definitely get a little bit of that citrusy feel. Taste-wise... Nice amount of flavor, tangerine, orange, drying effect as expected for this style. Gets into the cheeks nicely, leaving some flavor after you swallow. Not bad. It's got a nice scratchiness on the throat. Basically the freshness, I guess, with the hops, but... The fresher I have them, the more I get that scratchiness as it goes down. Has a little bit of that underlying bacon soda type feel that I also get from some of the fresher ones. But pretty decent. Pretty medium. In the body of it, it's got a nice feel to it, not too heavy at all. Drinking Sons of Kent 8 Track XPA. Hmm. So that's one of the Canadian brews, I take it. What's the ABV on that one? I'm thinking if it's an XPA, it might be at least 8% if it's kind of towards a, a double. It's got grapefruit, that grapefruit's coming through. Almost a little bit of a tart quality. You get a good astringency with this one here. At 45 IBU, it's actually a little more bitter than I thought. Well, 
I thought it was going to be tapered down a little bit. Usually, as a rule of thumb, people will say if you're a 50 IBU, expect a little bit more bitterness, but over 50, I should say, sorry to burp there, over 50, a little bit more bitter, bitterness, under 50, a little bit more maltiness. And so I thought the bitterness might be a little bit more subdued, but you do get to hit with that bitterness there. You get a little bit in the trail end of a little bit of a syrupy type feel. Oh, it's just an extra pale ale then. So not too high ABV at all then. At 5.7. I don't know why they, I'll have to research that, why they call those extra pale ales when they're only 5'7". You think extra pale ale, they might be using a little bit more hops, but you just, I don't know, in my mind, I think they're going to be a bigger ABV as well. I will say halfway down the glass right now, I almost feel a slight, not overly done, but a slight kind of soapy finish in this one. Which is known to be picked up in some beers as well. Doesn't really affect the taste or whatever, but it's just what pops in your head when you're drinking it. But for like, I think this was two forty nine for the nineteen ounce can. Not a bad price. And the shoes has been doing some good beers for a while there out of Oregon. He said it's an IPA, really. <laughs> They just call it an XPA. I mean, the line is actually pretty thin from Pale Ale to India Pale Ale. I mean, the um, Three Floyd Zombie Dust, a lot of people confuse that as an IPA when technically it's considered an American Pale Ale because of all the hops they actually use in it. Decent enough beer. I don't know if I would actually get this one again. Um, it's okay. It's not great. It does not me back in any type of way. Kind of just serves its purpose. Just kind of neutral. Kind of neutral on this one. Anybody else got any big plans this Friday evening or this weekend? Very good and loaded with Citra. Nice. You know what, speaking of Citra, I don't know how good it actually is up in Canada. I haven't tried it yet here. But I do see the Labatt Citra at one of my spots. And I was thinking about picking it up and giving that a try uh, to see what that tastes like. I actually do like a Labatt Blue once in a while. And when I make the beer chili, Labatt Blue isn't a bad beer to actually add to it, i found. Although the best to add to the chili when I'm making it is usually like a stout, especially when I use the, uh, the Golden Road Gingerbread Stout. That really worked well in the chili. But this is kind of a laid back night. Got the Michigan game on against Iowa right now. Going to probably game in a little bit, but after working all day, definitely wanted to get stuff, other stuff done so I can kick back and enjoy some beer. And not a bad one to start the night off with. And the Vanessa, if you're still there, are you drinking anything tonight? Or just kind of kick back, relaxing? So 
that I just uploaded the one video earlier about the difference between the ale and the lager after being asked about that. I can't remember who asked me the question though. I thought I had written down. I couldn't find it here because I wanted to give him a shout out there in the video. But if you guys like those kind of videos, let me know as well. I want to do some more stuff like that. After I did it, I kind of thought, well, you know, there is another style I could have done as well, which is the Lambic. So I'll probably do a Lambic video as well on what that breakdown is. Ah, the foreign Guinness. Well, you still got that in the dragon's milk. <laughs> I do have, and I might do it this weekend. I have the Guinness. I might do it tonight. I don't know if I, if I do another video. I have the Guinness stock ale now which is the one done in the bullet barrels so i do want to try that one um i ended up picking up a four pack of that a while back and haven't done any of them yet so that'll be one that i definitely want to do here and finally see what that tastes like everything with guinness now though is marked against a foreign extra style for me Vanessa, have you ever had the Antwerpen Stout from Guinness? That's actually probably my second favorite from Guinness as well, which is pretty decent. Ontario gets accused of Island Citra made by Labatt's, LOL. <laughs> so you get the Goose Island Citra, but you don't get the Labatt Citra. <laughs> but it's still made by Labatt's, that's funny. <laughs> Yeah, I still got the Goose Island Bourbon County beers I haven't done yet. Those are in the cellar. So I have to do those at some point. The only one I've done is the one I did weeks ago, which was the uh, 2018 uh, Reserve. And that was the one with the Elijah Craig, Craig Barrels, which was really good from uh, last year. No, but we'll look for it. Yeah, if you happen to see the Antwerpen... That's actually a good one. Um, I haven't done the Guinness Milk Stout yet. I've heard some people like that one as well, but that's another one that I want to try from them. And then outside of that, I haven't seen much more of the other Guinness stuff. I know if you go to uh, Maryland that they have more stuff there, but you have to get to the brewery to check out what they're doing. So that's still kind of on the list of things that I definitely want to do. So this year I have to go back up to New Jersey and I feel like I should take like two weeks just to drive around and see some of the other stuff with the breweries and everything. A lot of good stuff happening up there in the Northeast. What's up, Bamboo? Cheers. Happy Friday, my friend. You drinking on anything tonight? I think the base had that one. I would look for the milk stout too. Yeah, I'm going to look for the milk stout here as well to kind of see what that tastes like. Um, the Antwerpen is like in blue bottles, I believe, if you see it. And uh, the milk stout, I want to say it has like a label on it that might be a yellow label or so, but um, like they're for an extra, but... They usually have that like in variety packs, but they might have some spots where it's not and you can actually pick it up. Soon I'm going to crack a beer. There you go. Any idea what you're going to be cracking open, Bamboo, by the way? I was going to crack open and I may still go crack open. Um, hey, what's happening, John Roderick? I like that. Um, I was going to crack open the prairie that I have, the screenshot, which I may actually drink that too. Yeah, the Dragon Milk Stout is excellent. I've actually got the Dragon's Milk um, Oat Milk Cookie variant. I still need to do the review on that one, so that's downstairs as well. As well. I just got too many beers on there. If you can have too many, then I'd be I'd have too many. Although 
I know others that have more than I do, and they don't seem like it's too many for them. <laughs> it's just going to take a while. Like, I shouldn't have to buy beer probably until, like, June or July at the point of so many beers I got down there right now. I will buy more beer. I just shouldn't. A red Stripe, a Drake's Hefeweizen, and a Pacifico. Nice. I've been hearing some good stuff about the Drake Spears. I'd be kind of interested to see what you think of them. Um, I need to see if I can find some of those as well around here. But uh, I see them popping up here and there. Tuna fish sandwich and Guinness. I'm hungry. <laughs> well, I never thought about pairing a Guinness with uh, tuna fish, but fish and chips. So I guess fish would work with a Guinness. There you go. Flying Fish Hazy Bones. Oh, nice. IPA. Where's Flying Fish out of, John? Are they a local to you or are they kind of in your region? I haven't heard of Flying Fish before. Yeah, we got a week and well, we got like six weeks to our next big beer fest here, which will be the Cincinnati Beer Fest. So going to start gearing up for that. That is actually 500 plus beers we have for that festival. So looking forward to that. There's actually one in Cleveland next weekend, which is part of them. There's one in Louisville in February as well. I was thinking about maybe trying to go to one of those, but not sure if we're going to make the road trip up there or not. But uh, it is beer festival season. New brewery in town here in about a year. Right downtown, less than two miles. Nice. Yeah, it is nice that you have all these local breweries around you that you can go out and enjoy stuff. Yeah, Drake's is good out of San Leandro, just 15 minutes from me. But try them out if you get a chance. All right, I'll keep an eye out for them. My one place, Jungle Gems, probably gets those in. Um, oh, Flying Fish is not local New Jersey brewery. Okay. Well, that's good to know for when um, I am up in New Jersey in August. I will definitely look to see about uh, their beers as well. My buddy up in Jersey, um, he runs Spellbound. I got to check out his beers. So I'll be checking out some of the East Coast stuff. I have to go up to Columbus here in February and in April, which is actually pretty cool. I mean, I go up there. Because my wife has to do stuff for her job, but I kind of get the day to like go beer hunting and beer shopping and check out a few places. So I'll be up there picking up some stuff on a beer run. I just said I wasn't going to buy any more beer. I already got my next beer runs planned. Isn't that something? Uh, but they have some nice stuff around Columbus. They have a brewery district there in Columbus and really find some good stuff there. What I do find now is that when I do beer shop, though, I tend to buy more of the bigger beers more of your stouts, uh, imperial porters, things like that, because I can actually sell her those for a lot longer, not have to get really into them. And then for like IPAs, I'll usually get those more local here if I want to drink those fresher without having to worry about that. So if you're building a seller, there are certain things you may want to follow on how you build a seller so that you're able to enjoy things, you know, in the best way and not have anything get wasted or go bad or anything like that. Broadbrook Brewery reopens new location at the end of runway here. You can sit there and watch jets fly. Nice. I need to go I need to go to some more of the local breweries that we have. I haven't been to any in a while and it's always like, oh I mean to stop out and see so I see all the guys that run these breweries, but it's like it's kind of a fine line as far as like you have the stuff at, at your house you have beer if you're getting beer do you drink the beer there or do you go out to a brewery and pay a little bit more at a brewery but you get more of an experience so it's kind of a you know flip the coin type thing you're in, uh, I am actually I'm in the Cincinnati area technically I'm in Kentucky but most of us just consider Cincinnati area so right there on the border, essentially, of Ohio and Kentucky. And 15 minutes from Indiana as well. So I can actually get some of their beers rather easily. Things like Three Floyds that they get over there. 
it's not hard for me to get some of their stuff. Which with the way that beer distribution laws are, if you got like more than one state around you and the way things are set up, it makes it nice that you can get all these different type of beers because there are some beers that might distribute to Indiana that don't distribute to Kentucky or Ohio and vice versa. So you're able to pick up some of those loopholes. Oh yeah, great beer, great area for beer. Uh, I did the one video a little bit ago where I talked about Cincinnati being the number one spot for beer drinkers, mainly because we have, you know, and it was all done statistically by a firm that really does financial stuff, but they've been doing it the last couple of years. Like for number of breweries per 100,000 people, number of bars per 100,000 people, different criteria like that they put into it. We came out number one. St. Louis, you know, home of Budweiser was number two. You had three areas out of North Carolina that were on the list in the top ten. But for a beer drinker, it's a great spot. We actually have a Bach Festival coming up here. I forgot about that. That comes up here at the end of February. So we'll have a lot of Bach beers coming in. Outside of uh, Germany and Munich, we have the largest Oktoberfest in the world. So we have the second largest Oktoberfest that hits here in September every year. Um, so if you ever come around September or you want to plan to come at a time, come during Oktoberfest if you love beer. Uh, we can now bring our own growlers to have filled. I need to buy more vacuum f uh, flasks to fill. Yeah, we had that for a while too. We have all the growlers in Kentucky and Ohio. We can do that. I'm not sure about Indiana. The one thing I'll say, though, I've got, like, growlers now that kind of just sit in our pantry that I don't even use as much. So the whole growler thing at a point is good when you first start doing it. and then But then it's like you almost feel like, depending on what kind of growler you get, now if you get a vacuum seal like you're talking about, you definitely have more time before you have to drink it. But if you get like the regular glass ones, you know, you're trying to drink those within a, within a couple of days. And that's when you start to notice the beer gut getting put on. So I don't use the growlers as much. Although behind me, I do have a, this one here that my wife had got me for Christmas. It's a Yukon growler. <coughs> so I can use this 64 ounces. And that'll uh, keep the beer nice and cold for me. We actually have a spot here called uh, Eli's Barbecue, which does great barbecue food, and you can actually BYOB. So you bring your own alcohol, and you can sit there and enjoy it with barbecue. So something like that would come in handy. Hey, what's happening, Hans? Cheers, my friend, down in Miami. What is going on? I wish you could send some of that heat up here to Cincinnati because now winter has started to show up and it is getting cold, my friend. Uh, New England is small. I should be able to map out trips to every brewery for several years, pull a trailer and tent. Yeah, that would be excellent. I would love to do something like that. I would like to set up like a, a beer vacation tour, right? There's some spot, there's some companies that now have beer vacations that they book beer vacation type trips, but... Just if you were had an RV or something like that and you wanted to go drive around a country and each day you go to a different city that had a key brewery, that would be a cool vacation to me. Yeah, Ohio and Pennsylvania have those large German-American populations, so it makes sense. They would have an Oktoberfest there. Yeah, it's huge. And uh, I grew up in New Jersey originally, and then Eastern PA had a lot of Dutch over there, but you would get like a lot of the Dutch-type snacks and stuff, but for... The German sense on the beer, it just is crazy here. In northern Kentucky, we have a town called Covington that was settled by a lot of the German population. So it's a place called Main Strauss. And you get like old throwback like German food. They'll make it the restaurants there. And of course, the beers are on tap. And they get beers sent over from Germany on some of, at some of the places, which are nice. But yeah, when we go to Oktoberfest, it's like 
you know, you see commercials for Sam Adams Oktoberfest, or you see these other breweries, Oktoberfest beers. When they come over, it's just like straight to uh, Weisstefan or whoever it may be that's coming from Germany, and you're drinking their beers for the most part. It's like you can get the Sam Adams stuff anytime you want, but they bring over some neat stuff from Germany here. Yeah, thanks. I, I thought it was a nice one, too. Yeah, definitely. I haven't used it yet, but I will use it at some point. Hydro flasks are also good, definitely. What's up, Beer Hound? Cheers, my friend. Calling in from the OC, Cali. What are you drinking tonight, Beer Hound? I know you're going to have something in front of you there. Driving RV around, collecting ones, and bringing them out that way. There you go. Yeah, there's a lot of good stuff here in Kentucky. Um, there's another down in Louisville, Lexington. They have some different stuff happening down there with some of their breweries, too. Uh, but, yeah, where we're at, Northern Kentucky, huge, huge German population. Um, that, uh, yeah, it's, it's, they, and they actually are big enough. They have their own Covington-type uh, Oktoberfest as well. What up, Dave? Cheers, my friend. And Dr. DD in the house says, what's up, everyone? And what are you drinking on tonight, buddy? Hey, hey Dolly, how you doing? Just sub, <laughs> you beer hound. <laughs> Did you say just sub like you meant just sub, Dolly? <laughs> he just subbed the beer hound? What is going on? So, Dolly, is your channel working now? So I can go back and start watching your videos and stuff again. You got everything all squared away. <laughs> Dolly said hello to Vanessa. God bless. Three Weavers. Epitrit IPA. Hmm. I just love how everybody's got these different local breweries that people are popping up with drink local support the community right yes love beer hound beer hound is a good man out there in cali nice i want to keep that weight at 166 getting older nothing 166 i don't think i was 166 since the seventh grade vanessa says hello all three weavers expatriate ipa yep right i got two videos all right well i think i need to resub to your channel because i think when i did it before the channel had actually had the issue so let me take a look here there we go so there we go dolly i just resubbed back to your channel and Dolly has put up the video of the original Philly cheesesteak from Philly. What? And Dinner Wednesday. So so did you make the original cheesesteak or did you go to Philly and get the cheesesteak? Now, you can't fool me, Dolly, because I grew up in New Jersey 20 minutes outside Philly. So I know what the real Philly cheesesteak is supposed to be. <laughs> I am looking forward to having a Philly cheesesteak when I'm back up in New Jersey. I'm also looking forward to getting a Wawa shorty, and I'm looking forward to some Sicilian pizza. I do miss Sicilian pizza being away from New Jersey. And we'll probably go down to the shore, which means saltwater taffy. Yeah, I'm going to need to start working out more. <laughs> I live in Philly, fool. <laughs> you never told me you lived in Philly. I didn't know you lived in Philly, Dolly. <laughs> with your mr t i live in philly fool south philly nice there you go back in the day spent some time on south street over in philly partying and all that stuff when we were back in high school what are your thoughts on the chicken cheesesteak I don't know how you can call a chicken cheesesteak. I mean, I know what they're doing with the chicken, but a cheesesteak is just a cheesesteak. And if you get it in a Philly, it's kind of like everything else kind of pales in comparison. 
Asia just called it chicken sandwich. <laughs> Which, I do like some of the chicken sandwiches like that. I uh, just finished a pizza, grilled cheese, and find a crack, friend to crack another three weavers. Nice. That sounds like a nice kickback night, my friend. Uh, check out JL Jupiter. He's from Philly. has a huge channel. I will definitely do that. Let me uh, let me take a look here. JL Jupiter. Alright. Yeah, he does have a huge channel. 60 subs. I'm going to send him a comment and say, Dolly sent me. Um, let's see. We drove down to Philly to sightsee in 2016. A lot of good sights in Philly for sure. I uh, love Jersey too. My spot was Mount Laurel and then the boardwalk. <laughs> you know what's so funny, Dolly, is actually when I'm in New Jersey in August, guess where I'll be? At Mount Laurel because that's where... My mother actually stays, so I'll be back up in Mount Laurel in August when we come up, and then we'll be going all around the area doing stuff. Gotcha. I <laughs> love a chicken cheese steak. Yeah, I don't, I don't hate a chicken cheese. I just, it's just funny when I see it. Like, that's not, that's not steak. That's just chicken, you know. But I can still eat it with no problem. Waffle chicken sandwich with pure maple syrup. I've had chicken and waffles, but I never made it a sandwich. That's an idea. I don't know why I've never done that. Didn't KFC have a sandwich like that or something when they did waffles and chicken in the middle? Yep, just showing in my onesie watching Beer Yoda. <laughs> funny guy. Funny guy. <laughs> uh, I'm just a young I'm just a young Jedi trying to learn the tricks. Cherry Hill too, yeah. Cherry Hill. Spent a lot of time. Cherry Hill Mall. Uh, last time we went up there. I uh, caught up with a few buddies over at Cherry Hill Mall, and they had one of the restaurants, I can't remember what the name of it, but we got together and ate there. Um, it was a restaurant that's out of Vegas as well, so I was kind of surprised they had it there at Cherry Hill Mall, but it's all right. Uh, Johnny Inside with, with Trap Door. Oh, I knew you were around the way, boy, Rod. <laughs> Man, I loved you, my mom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Agreed, it's just chicken. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong with the chicken, though. Nothing wrong with the chicken. Got a few of the Ennis and Gun Highland Cask English Strong Ales. Have not partaked yet. The bottles are in the cellar. Very nice. The Ennis and Gun that I've had from them, and it's been the Whiskey Barrel more. I've had other stuff at pubs and everything. I've always kind of liked Ennis and Gun, so they've always been fine by me. One of the places I go to in Columbus, it's actually the only one that I know that has actually a cask keg. It's bean and barley, and it's a nice beer they usually have on that when you get a cask one. John said, not a steak. <laughs> Belgian waffle and deep fried chicken tender sandwich. Yeah, we got a place here that does Belgian waffles too, and they do a, a uh, chicken and waffle. We got a place called... Uh, I think it's Joella's Fried Chicken. It's like maybe, I, I don't know if it's a chain now. She, I know they got spots through Cincinnati on the Ohio side and in Kentucky. So it probably is part of it. But they have one mean chicken and waffles plate that you can get there. It's too late to be talking food. <laughs> get it hungry. I can't help you there. You know, usually on Friday night I'm watching uh, Diners and Driving and Dives. And to your point, Dave, yeah, I get hungry when I actually watch that show. So, yeah, talking about it would do the same thing for sure. And I'm to a Mexican John to get some tacos in Camden. Girl, you rolling to Camden? You better watch yourself. Camden was kind of an interesting area. Camden, <laughs> back in the day, well, I think today is still kind of a rough type area. But back in the day, we used to go to Camden to watch like the fights on Friday nights and when we were in high school it was kind of like we always seen there be fights at the park and people would sit there drinking beer and stuff waiting for something to happen and every Friday there'd be a fight there but uh Camden had some rough areas for a while Camden was like the number one spot in America for uh 
I don't think it was murder. I think it was like car robberies or some, something that was like bad. It was like, you definitely had to be careful if you're in Camden. Eat them sitting in the bench swings. Oh, let me see. And around the fire pit, yeah. That would be a nice night. I don't think you want to do that tonight. You're not going to do that tonight, though, because it's too cold outside. <laughs> Go to a Mexican John Mad, Mad Flavor Tacos. Popeye's Chicken Sandwich is that. You know, I've never, I've never had the Popeye's Chicken Sandwich. I've had friends and people that I've seen online that have gotten it. Um, we have a few Popeyes around us. They had to sign up saying they had the sandwich. I don't know. I never, uh, I just never got it. Just never was in that kind of getting on a frenzy like a lot of people were. But anybody that I know that's had it has said it was pretty damn good for sure. Um, roast pork. I do like some roast pork. My fried chicken on the patio. I like dinners and dive show. Yeah, I mean... What Guy Fieri gets to do, driving around, talking to the restaurant. I mean, obviously he was a chef for a period of time, but it's like if I can get that as a beer job and just drive around to breweries and talk about beer, that would be awesome. That'd be my retirement gig right there. Uh, fire. Going with going with the group. Oh, yeah. yeah okay, so you're in a group. All right, yeah. Let's make sure you're protected there. Uh, yeah, it's still kind of crunchy. <laughs> Carjacking. <laughs> yeah, that all happens in Camden, but that is because it is small. Uh, bad media coverage. Yeah, it's... I guess if you look at it, it's from the per capita base of how many people are actually there. Now, back in the day, growing up in New Jersey, I grew up mainly in Burlington, New Jersey, but my grandparents were in Morristown, which you know Dolly's right next to Mount Laurel, um, and like a lot of my older, older relatives. So my, uh, great aunt, she used to actually work in Camden at the Campbell's plant back in the day. And I used to go there as a little kid and Camden was a totally different community back in the seventies. And you didn't have a lot of those issues and then kind of had the stuff that popped up over the years that made it go bad, which sucks. Cause you know, it was a, it was a nice area back in the day. Incoming snowstorm, camping inside, definitely. Yeah, I saw the weather coming your way. It does not look good for sure. This Three Weavers IPA tastes just like Pliny the Elder. Whoa, whoa now, whoa now. <laughs> Although if it tastes that good, you got a winner. John says he will never try the Popeye sandwich. Is there a reason for that, John? <laughs> I had the Popeye's chicken sandwich. It's okay. I make hella better, and you know this. <laughs> Dolly's making better chicken than Popeye's. Um, Dolly and Beanie, I need a woman that can cook. <laughs> Beard, Beardhound needs some help there. Uh, that would be a fun show to watch you. Oh, well, thank you, Vanessa. I would... I would I would love to be able to do something like that. So, believe me, I I know a few of my um, old college mates that have some ties out there in L.A. that I've been kind of trying to put a bug in their ear to do some stuff. So who knows? Maybe one day. Uh, Morristown is a wealthy area. Well, there's there's Morristown and then there's Morristown, and I don't know about Morristown, but Morristown is a wealthy area where my grandparents and relatives used to stay. Um, that's kind of where Donovan McNabb used to live, where he was, a, when he was the Eagles quarterback and some other athletes out there, some big houses and stuff. But yeah, Beer Hound, I cook so good, I just used three pots. Look at that. Everything is AJ. I used to visit Red Bank, New Jersey a lot. Everything is smack delicious. <laughs> Dolly and Bean, that's hot. <laughs> My reason I don't follow trends. Okay, yeah. See, that's the other thing. I can hear you. I can hear you there, John. That's why I didn't really get into it because everybody was kind of jumping onto it. It was kind of like I felt like it was an overhyped type thing. So, and even with Popeyes, we have local joints that make stuff better than what Popeyes actually does. So it wasn't like I was going to go crazy over Popeyes anyway. Uh, Fade from Boardwalk is a yeah. That's what I'm saying. So if I'm at the shore, 
that saltwater taffy automatically I gotta pick up if I'm down there. And then there's um I think it's Gino's, that's the hoagie spot down there at the shore on the boardwalk too, that you gotta you gotta get a hoagie from Gino's if you're down there as well. I like their spicy chicken tenders, very nice. I went to Edmund Scientific a lot through the 80s and 90s. They were off exit three. Yeah, so the Mount Holly exit, I think, is exit five. So you were like two exits away from where our exit would have been off the turnpike. Uh, what college did you graduate from, Rod, if you don't mind me asking? My new boyfriend went to Howard. I actually graduated from uh, West Virginia University, WVU. So that was like six hour drive from, from back home in Jersey. It was funny because I wanted to go away, but I didn't want to go. I wanted to go away, but I wanted to go away far enough where it wasn't too far in case something happened. Um, but I got to West Virginia and we had enrollment at the time, like 20, 23,000 students. And when I got there, I found like 5,000 were from New Jersey. So we kind of had a big minority there at the university and stuff, which was kind of cool. So you were away from home, but you weren't really away from home because you knew so many people that had the same likes and stuff that you actually have from up in New Jersey. Uh, never heard of Pioneer Chicken. I never heard of them before. Um, I tell you what I, what I do miss, though, is being up in Jersey, the diners. You can't find a diner like you can in New Jersey. I mean, New Jersey has so many diners. That was some good stuff. Although, uh, Dee Dee said Early Bird Diner in Charleston. Well, Savannah Highway has one of the best chicken and waffles. It was a diner drive through and dies, pan fried pound cake, and homemade butter pecan ice cream. I'm really hungry. <laughs> that does sound pretty good. Uh, Vanessa graduated twice from Western New England University here in Springfield, Mass. Yeah, one of my high school buddies, he actually graduated from UMass. He played football for them back in the day, and he got a scholarship up there. So, he actually still lives up in Massachusetts. Love the Bob Evans sausage gravy in Cherry Hill the best. Hey, what's happening, Michelle? Cheers. Happy Friday to you. Dinners are fun. Diners are fun in Jersey. Many old ones. Still. Yeah, uh, Golden Dawn was one that we had on Route 130. We used to go there like crazy. Always good food. I mean, too much food because they would just give you these huge portions at the diners up there. But the food was definitely, it was all comfort food. So you were just like, have it and enjoy it. Graduated into mad sexiness and hell sexiness. <laughs> okay, Dolly. <laughs> Seriously, California is lacking in fried chicken places. Well... You guys got all the health stuff out there, Hound. Is, everybody's pushing on being all healthy. Although, when I was out in California last, it was years ago for work, there was a place that we got burgers from. I think it was called Richie's, which were really good. Um, we had some of the burgers that someone ran and got them for us at a convention we were at. I've been to In-N-Out Burger, which is actually good as well out there. I've been to Fat Burger in California, which was actually good. I mean... I bet it's, you guys got some good stuff out there, but uh, maybe the chicken, you're hurting a little bit. You know, the one place I did want to go to that I haven't been in California, it's just because I hear so much about it, is Pinkies, uh, the hot dog place you guys have out there. Chilling. I'm not working today. Nice. Very nice. Always nice to have a day off for sure. I'm off on Monday, so it'll be a three-day weekend. Favorite diner in Jersey is called the Diamond go after my boyfriend's golf course. All right. I haven't heard of the diamond out there. Never been to California. Would love to go, but don't like the heat, guys. Well, if you go to, like, San Diego around there, or actually where Hound is in OC, it's probably, like, 75 all the time. Every time I went to San Diego, it's been 75. Um, it does get warm, and it does get cold up in Northern California. I've been to San Francisco. I've been to Oakland. Um, but down south would definitely be the preference. Nothing like a New York City skirt steak and eggs after late night from hanging in the city. Yeah, that would be good too. Yeah, back in the day, drinking it and going to like that 3 a.m. meal or something. <laughs> Love winter. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of winter. I mean, I, I'm more, I don't like snow as much. I can, if it's cold, it's just cold. You know, you deal with it. But 
If I don't have any snow, I'm not going to miss it. Oh, yeah, Pinky's on PCH is killer. Yeah, I always hear about it. I see people that have went there. Like, they line up around a corner. You get, like, you know, average people, celebrities, sports, whatever it may be. People just love going to that place, it seems. Love the cold, huh? <laughs> Summer, all year round, it was like 70. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, you're like 70, 75 or whatever. Like, when at San Diego, it was always like some nice weather. I enjoy wandering New York City. Used to work at Pfizer Corp. Nice. Yeah, New York is always fun, too. I haven't been there in years, either. If you got a family, a nice time to go to New York is, like, obviously, like, Thanksgiving and Christmas because they got, like, all the holiday stuff down there um, around Times Square and everything like that. FAO Schwartz and everything. So I don't support Louisville or Kentucky. I, no, I mean, I'm... I'm WVU, so I root for West Virginia. Now, if they're on TV, I'll watch the games and stuff, but though I got no no loyalty to either of them. Actually, the closest one to me would be UC for Cincinnati. So, tacos tonight. Nice. Taco Friday. Hey, New York Strip, it was amazing, bro. I, New York Strip is one of my favorite cuts to actually have of a steak. A lot of people like ribeye. Because ribeye has that fattiness to it. Um, it gives it the flavor. But I always like a New York strip. Beer hound in your home is nice. But how do you handle that critter noise? <laughs> Are those birds? <laughs> Support their sports teams. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like um, I got, you know, friends here now. You know, they're Kentucky. They're Louisville. Some are root for both. But most of the time, you're one or the other. Gets in the low 60s. And I get my onesie on LOL. <laughs> You're proud of that onesie, Hound. Yeah, Dolly's going to ask you to do a video on your onesie, I'm sure, at some point. But yeah, I am happy to have a three-day weekend. I am ready to kick back and relax. Actually, I need to update some stuff here on the YouTube channel. Um... And get some other stuff done that I wanted to get done around the house and some other things. So, looking forward to kicking back. What about Philly cheesesteak? I always love a Philly cheesesteak. In fact, I don't know, if Michelle, if you saw Dolly's channel. Dolly posted a video of the Philly cheesesteak. And that's what we were talking about earlier were the Philly cheesesteaks. People will run you over and be like, is your fault so different than Philly? People are nice. And I had those birds as background sound, LOL. <laughs> so you've been adding the birds onto the track. <laughs> yeah, you say Philly people are nice though, Dolly, and pretty much get along with that. But a lot of people don't find Philly people to be nice. It's not, a lot of people don't see it as the city of brotherly love when they're there, from people that I know that have visited. Oh, Cash Deli in New York City for the pastrami sandwich. Why are you going to talk about yeah, and um, I wonder if it's Cats down in Miami that they have a location down there. We were down in Miami. It was one of the New York delis down there. And it reminded me of Cats, but I can't remember the name of it now. Um, and they got killer sandwiches just like them. Uh, I thought you had Birds Beer Hound, had an Alfred Hitchcock moment. I'm scared of birds. I uh, I thought I thought Hound had birds too before. When I watched this video, I just figured he had birds off to the side or something. But uh, sweaty that Alfred Hitchcock movie. When I was a little kid and saw that, for a while I was not a fan of birds either. In fact, when I used to walk home from school to my grandparents' house, because I went to school for, like in Morristown um, where they were, we had to pass one of the rec centers, and all the pigeons would gather on top of the roof there. And I would literally cross the street because I was, did not want to get close to the side they were on. So that uh, that was a good movie that Alfred Hitchcock came up with. Connecticut originally, Stanford, yeah. Which Connecticut has some uh, some good beers up there now too. You can make your own at home better. You're talking about the cheesesteak dolly. I went to Cats. Tourist Trap 2 is expensive for what? Oh, you're talking about Cats you went to. Okay. Well, I mean, they're known for their stuff now, but it's some good food still. Dolly, don't hate. Don't hate, Dolly. 
Uh, I have background sounds to match the beer title, so, uh, oh, well, that's kind of a neat idea. Slow roast a pot roast that melts in your mouth. Well, all right, nothing wrong with that. Oh, baby, then I add the cheese and hell freezes over. <laughs> well, you need, to, you need to do a video showing your recipe so people can see how you do the pot roast and everything. You didn't want to get pooped on. <laughs> well, no, I didn't want. I didn't want that. But I also, if you ever saw the birds movie, I didn't want the birds coming to attack me either. You know, so everything in New York City is expensive. Try taking a cab from the airport to the hotel in Manhattan is a car payment. Yeah, they uh, they definitely will run you up on some of the stuff, and it's the same way in Miami. If you go to Miami, you just know you're going to be paying. If you go to San Francisco, you know you're going to be paying a lot of money up there as well. That's just where you're at, you know. So, you know, when you build these vacations, you got to build a little extra pattern for what you're going to actually spend. Unless, of course, you get Raj A deals. If you can get the Raj A deals at places, you'll be in good shape. Cook almost every day. I will make videos nice, very nice. But I'll definitely watch your cooking videos then. Um, the only beanie post up, share the knowledge, right? Exactly, share the knowledge. Love cooking at home. Hey, Dolly, have you ever watched my beer chili video on the channel? You should watch the beer chili video when I made the beer chili. Very good. Hate to pay for something I can make better. I can see that, you know. It's like we go to some of the places for like special events, steakhouses, and stuff like that, and Sometimes you have a steak and it's like, a, you know, depending where you're at, for instance. So we've gone to like Ruth Chris before and what you'll pay for that steak. You're kind of like, is it really worth it? Is it really worth it? You could have made a steak better probably at home. Um, some of the other places we go to is kind of like, you question it sometimes. I don't think any steak is worth like $70, 80 or something. So uh, Crazy Eddie, yeah. <laughs> Save your coins. You need to save them. I miss old Crazy Eddie. Those, those are some great commercials back in the day. Some great savings. Used to always want to look there to get some stereo equipment. You get some great deals. In fact, two of the speakers I actually have. One is actually behind me. And I have one in the basement. They actually were from back in college. It still lasts. But I believe... When I had gotten them, my mother had gotten them for a Christmas gift for me. And they were actually Crazy Eddie, like, deals. 12-inch woofers or whatever in them. And uh, they still kick. Ruth Chris, yum. Now, Ruth Chris was good. I will say that. But was it worth the price is the question. You know, but that's like one of those things you chalk up to an experience. One thing I will say, the last few years, going on vacations... I've actually started to fall in love with more of the all-inclusive type packages. Went to Jamaica, went to Mexico, went to Dominican Republic. All-inclusive. You don't have to worry about anything. You just pay the price. You're done. And the food over there, and all three had me questioning what we eat here. All the fruit was fresher. All the vegetables were fresher. The fish, all that stuff. And it was kind of like... I don't know. I worry about our food supply sometimes here in the States with all the companies we have involved. Um, James Earl Jones, 89 today. Yeah. Fun fact. James Earl Jones actually played my cousin in a movie back in the 80s. He played my cousin Vernon Johns for the Vernon Johns story. If you ever look up that uh, movie, uh, who was actually considered one of the forefathers of the Civil Rights Movement, he actually played his character, uh, who the movie was about. Something you didn't know about me, maybe. Um, made a seafood gumbo that my boyfriend told me was better than his mama's. May she rest in peace. He almost cried. <laughs> well, that had to be some good seafood combo for sure. Uh, used to be a short order cook. All right, so you got some talent there. Uh, more, yeah, Morton's is also good. I've been to Morton's for steak, and that's actually, Morton's is more reasonable, I think, than maybe like a Ruth Chris in some regard, but 
They are. They're definitely good. When I get older, I want to open a small breakfast shop. Nice. That would be something cool to do. I would like to open up, you know, one of my things, maybe just someday own a bar or a bottle shop or something. Uh, oh, yeah, Morton's Yum. Hey, what's happening, Eric? Cheers, my friend. Are you back at the crib now? Eric's about to get some of that cold weather. Um, hey, what's happening? King Boo, it's been a while. What's going on? Cheers, my friend. Uh, going to do the BCBS Barley Wine in a few. Nice. Are you going to do a, um, a live review of the BCBS, Eric? Or are you going to record it? Hmm. Let me know. I'm going to see. I haven't opened mine up yet either. And Betty White is 98. Yeah. Betty White just keeps on kicking. I mean, she's pretty funny. Like, even in some of her older stuff, she's pretty funny. Uh, John says, cheers to Big Daddy Chronicles. And I love the James Earl Jones movie about the pretty Diane Carroll and her five children. James held it down. Yeah, James has had a great career. I want to get to making fresh breads in my backyard. I am already old. <laughs> no, you're not old, Vanessa. <laughs> already got one and a half on the ground. Oh, yeah, so you're already starting to feel the snow. Um, earlier tonight, they were talking about the weather. It was coming right across Michigan, so I knew you were in store for something. Perhaps. All right, well, let me know. Oh, Dolly says, hey, it's tricky, tricky. <laughs> I'm actually, I'm actually watching your Wolverines right now, Eric. I don't know if you know or not, but they're on TV versus Iowa right now in the uh, basketball game. Oh, Ben over drink. Oh, Dolly, you. <laughs> I'm starting to think that you use the Jedi mind trick store. That's twenty for that beer, sir. Rod is waving the hand. I will pay one ninety nine for that store, sure. <laughs> if it was only that easy. But you can't say stuff like that with Beer Hound around because he already thinks I'm like Yoda in some type of way. <laughs> oh, I'm like American Pickers in a beer store. Like, would you take this for that? <laughs> I've never tried a Bourbon County. Any you recommend that are available now? Well, with the Bourbon Counties, they always come out on Black Friday. And they have variants. So the base version is usually one that's put out in more places. But it's a matter of who gets it. So you have to find a spot that actually receives them. Uh, one of the spots I have locally, they had some that were left over at one point. Um, but some places they go real quick. If you're out of Washington or something like that, they'll be on the shelves for months out there. But the base version is one that most people can find most often. Things like the wheat wine that Eric mentioned or some of the reserve series. Excuse me, those are a little, usually a little bit lower uh, limited quality, or quantity rather, so they're a little harder to find. Can't talk for some reason. Um, but I would definitely recommend giving it a try. Any Bourbon County you see is worth trying, put it that way. Um, LOL, Michelle said back to Dr. D. Uh, I'm heading to bed, good night all. Hey, good night, Michelle. Thanks for swinging by for a bit, my friend. Uh, yeah, like Eric said, around Black Friday. You got a new Bell Stout that I'm going to try tonight. Should be delicious. Are you saying I got one or you got one? What Bell Stout did you get? Did you get the uh, the vanilla black note? Because I have the vanilla one. I haven't done that one yet. I'm just curious. Or did you get something different? Vanessa says, bye to Michelle. I love American Pickers, especially when he goes to the old farms. Yeah, it's, uh, it's one of those shows I fell into actually watching on... Probably because I used to go to estate sales and I would find things and resell them like on eBay back in the day. And it was kind of a fun thing. I started collecting more than I was actually selling. Like you see some of those people become hoarders almost. But um, it's always a, uh, a nice thing to check out. Probably going to do a video. I need to go to bed and get up to plow the snow we're going to get. Yeah, well, yeah, I guess you got to plow that. Although, whenever it snows now, I never get up and plow anymore. I just let it melt away and put some... The, uh, not the salt, but like the chemical stuff you can put out there to just make it defrost enough that I can get the car out to drive away. <laughs> We're actually in a great city for taking care of the roads. They come out and do the roads really quick. So if you get out of your driveway, you're usually in good shape. 
Hey, what's happening, Elbow Cheers? Always good to see you as well, my friend. Are you drinking on anything tonight? Anything that you're actually enjoying right now? Bye, Drake. Don't bend over too hard. <laughs> uh, King Boo said, I got one. Which one, which one did you get, King? I'm, I'm thinking the one out, because I'm thinking it, if it's the one that I got, which was like the, the one that I got was like the last one that was on the shelf when I picked it up. And it was a vanilla black note. So is that is that the one you said you you do have that one? That baby's eleven point three ABV. Uh, calling for four to eight. Yeah, you'll have to do some work then. Yeah, because you got it. I'm trying to think. I think with your driveway. You got pretty much a little bit more of a gravel or dirt, so I don't know if that affects it or whatever versus being on cement, but as far as how you have to plow. I don't think it's been a little, but it's got gold writing on it. Let's see. Oh, okay. Well, the, the vanilla black note has like white writing on kind of a tan label. But, you know, I wonder what one it is. We drive out to the Llama Farm tomorrow. Say so you're at the highest point in Connecticut on the mountain. Well, be careful tomorrow with the uh, the snow you guys are supposed to get as well, Vanessa. I was given a big bottle of Bacardi Puerto Rican gold for my boss on New Year. Give it to my brother. I don't drink. Well, that's nice of you to give it to him. Yeah, you don't. I mean, if your boss knew you, he would have got you a big thing of strawberry quick. That would have showed he knew who you actually were, Dolly, you know. Except my strawberry quick with ice. <laughs> yeah, see? He should have got you strawberry quick. Eric, are you watching the basketball game at all? Or did you kind of turn it off? <laughs> it's only like a six it was a six point game now, actually. Nice one, Porter from Copper Tail in Tampa. Nice. Hey, Elbow, did you end up getting the um, the malt liquor beer from that brewery that we had talked about that night? You said it was local to you. I'm just curious if you checked it out yet for the, uh, I think it was like, was a Malt 45 or something it was called? I remember you saying you were thinking about it because they were local to you. It was Malt 45 from Descent Craft Brewing. Only a few people have checked it in, but the average rating is a 4 on it right now and untapped. So if you do get it, people do seem to like it thus far. Uh, Mr. Juwan Howard will do great things. I love that Michigan hire him. Yeah, it's... Uh, I'm, I'm pulling for him. Juwan's always been a class act, you know, as a player or in the league. Um, it's actually Michigan and Iowa right now that I'm watching Dolly in basketball. So Eric is actually a Michigan fan. That's why I was asking if he was actually watching the game right now. Yeah, I think Vince Carter is trying to get um, Juwan Howard as far as in the A's for being the longest player to last in the NBA. I don't think Vince Carter is going to retire. I think he's going to keep going as long as he can. Uh, same thing. I love that Memphis hired Penny. Yeah, Penny's solid as well. Hopefully he pulls some good stuff off there. Something like Sexy Donut. <laughs> I'm sorry I didn't get there, but maybe it's still available. Yeah, I was just curious, you know, um, if you did get a chance to check it out as well. But... When I saw you pop in, I forgot to ask you the other night when you were on for a bit um, if you had a chance to try it yet. So I think it's just one of the local brewery type offerings, so you have to go there locally to pick it up. Yeah, next month from um, Fatheads here in Ohio, we'll have 
the hop juju and I told somebody I can't remember who it is now either but I would pick it up so I'm gonna do a review on that they asked me to do a review so if there's any beers you guys want me to try to check out always feel free to let me know in the comments and I'll try to pick them up and do reviews on them as well some I may have already in-house too so always feel free to let me know yeah Vince Carter is amazing I, he's still my favorite dunker of all time um, Some of the stuff that he's done, not just even in a dunk tournament, but in the games, it's crazy. But, uh, you know, and he had other parts of his game, too, but he's always known as being, like, the half-man, half-amazing. No, John, the Lord is amazing. He's just a dude. <laughs> Vince Carter's pretty amazing. <laughs> With skills, but he's good. <laughs> All-time favorite athlete is King James. Yeah, I mean... As far as an athlete, you can't really say that King James isn't definitely one of the top ones up there. The thing that hurts, I think, his legacy is some of the fouls that he tries to call for during the game. It's kind of like, I think it kind of waters him down a little bit. I mean, as good as he is and stuff like that, as big as he is, he there's a, there's a perception around him crying for the fouls, so to speak, but... You know, on court and off court. Off court, he's even a better person on the stuff he's actually been doing. Um, very impressive. Easily one of the best for sure. Um, I just, I just wish kind of it was like back when you grew up watching the bas basketball in the seventies and eighties. If you would have, if you'd have caught for those fouls back then, you would have got caught with a forearm by one of the players for being out there kind of doing that. Just, just different. Um. Hey, what's happening, BDL? Cheers, my friend. Bottom Dollar Outdoors. I'm about to say before you fin say hi before you know, I finished up. Yeah, thanks for swinging by. Um, I was trying to see, and maybe it's not showing up. I don't know if Blake was doing a Friday Night Throwdown or not tonight. I was looking on my phone and didn't see anything pop up, but YouTube's been screwing me up there. So if he's doing that, I may jump over there in a bit too. But Bottom Dollar Outdoors, if you haven't checked him out, uh, Brad just got his channel really rolling again, doing some more things. He's putting up some gun videos, some hunting videos. Make sure you check out Bottom Dollar Outdoors as well. Oh, Dolly, you're all about yourself again. Yeah, you're amazing. <laughs> Almost trapped in my pants, checked temperature, and it was Celsius at 3. That's 36. Fahrenheit, still cold. We were in the 70s this week. Yeah, we're supposed to be 50 tomorrow, but tonight we're like 20. Uh, man, I wish I had some Doritos, went food shopping, and forgot. Uh-oh. LeBron gets hammered and they call nothing. He does get hammered sometimes, but sometimes he doesn't really get hit that much. And then um, he cries for a foul, I think. Yeah, definitely, uh, Dave. Hope you are okay as well. And Pimp, LOL, Hans. <laughs> uh, Dolly, uh, LeBron is an amazing athlete. Deal with it. <laughs> he is an amazing athlete, yeah. Okay, John, on that, you are 100. <laughs> Not argue about that. Kid. <laughs> yeah, I mean, LeBron is, uh, he's on a different level. You know, he's he's definitely up there. Oh, it's 15 Fahrenheit at the moment. Let's see what it is outside here. Well, compared to you guys, we're having a little bit of a heat wave, it looks like. We're 34 right now. So I thought it was even supposed to be colder than that. We got the little snow flurry sign on our weather right now. But tomorrow's going to be 51 in rain. Now they're saying 48. And then we're in the 20s for the first couple days of the week. So. Yeah, it's no wonder that some of the flu stuff is up with all the weather switching and everything like that. Getting to zero, no temperature tonight. Ouch. That is cold. LeBron is a beast, supernatural. I can't do these degrees anymore. <laughs> well, are you, well, you, wait a minute. You're actually south now. You're down in Carolina, so we can go more south. Actually, my, uh, my in-laws are in Dallas, and they're getting cold weather down there, too. So, I guess you'd have to go down to the Keys or something and try to get warm weather. Or down to Miami like Hans is. 
Just curl up in a few blankets. There you go. Or you can be like Beer Hound. Throw the onesie on, right? Get in the onesie. Get your Snuggie out. Any brew fest coming up in my area? I remember you went to Cincinnati, trip to Jungle Gyms. Yeah, so I mentioned earlier before you came in on Elbow, um, we got our Cincinnati Beer Fest coming up that first week of March, so I'll be going to that. Actually, I'm going to have Todd in town and Shannon is, is coming up with Todd, and then we'll actually have Eric here as well, so we may shoot some video or something at that. There's no telling the Beer Fest, though. It's hard. To I've tried to shoot video, and I have shot video, but I've only taken video like early on because it gets a little bit crazy after a point. And you're like, I don't want to take any more video right now because it's kind of crazy. Uh, Bad Boys fan, I am not. No, I was not a Bad Boys fan. Um, growing up younger, I was actually a Lakers fan. So Bad Boys were the enemy as far as I was concerned. I, I was a Lakers fan up until the uh, Shaq Kobe pretty much incident. And then when Shaq left, and went to the Heat. I became more of a Heat's fan at that time um, and stopped rooting for the Lakers as much. I thought Kobe was a little whiny baby at that point. But um, now I don't watch the NBA as much. So it's kind of like I just watch it when it's playing. I don't really have a favorite team. But back in the day, I was I was Lakers. Uh, Vanessa Kitty's my future wife with the gun. Well, <laughs> Hans, you may have to wait since Vanessa's married already. So... <laughs> Uh, I love Fresh Prince and Martin, but not Bad Boys at all. <laughs> oh, you, I thought you were talking about the Bad Boys basketball team. Are you talking about the movie, the Bad Boys? Actually, the movie, I did like the first Bad Boys. The second one was okay. The one that just came out, I won't see at the movies, but I probably will watch it when it's on HBO or Netflix, whoever gets it first at that point. But, yeah, I, I like the Bad Boy movies. Went to the South once, bunch of hicks. Well, it depends where you went to in the South there, darling. Uh, but I said hello to Hans. Hans says, hi, babes. They called Jimmy Sprinkles. I was like, oh, corn cup. No, they are. They are. What are you talking about? Oh, wait a minute. Okay. They call it Sprinkles. I was going to say, because we call it Jimmy's where we're at up there. But, yeah, here in Ohio, they call them Sprinkles, too. Although we grew up calling them Jimmy's, yeah. Vermont Country Store sells old-timey onesies and union suits. There you go. Get an old union suit. Bad Boys and Movie Sorry, Swiss Top. Yeah. I was, like, lost there at first. But, yeah. I like it. I like Joe Paninano as well. Who's, like, their, um, their boss there, the sergeant or whatever. He's pretty funny in the movies that he does. Um, I got no problem with it. You're not going there for the plot. You're just going pretty much to action and Michael Bay blowing up stuff. So... In that regard, I do enjoy that aspect of the films. Yes, next stop, Sarasota, then Columbia or Panama. <laughs> you can always go to Rio. Rio's a good time. <laughs> and my all-time favorite is Jordan, the sellout. Is he a sellout, though? I mean, he's, do he's doing some stuff. You get bad boys from Dollar General. One ninety nine a basket. Probably by the time it comes out, yeah. Yeah, I, it, with the cost of what it is nowadays. Like, I'll spend money on beer, as you all know. Even if I don't get a Rod J deal, I'll still spend money on beer. But when it comes to movies, I'm kind of fickle on what I want to actually watch nowadays because... You know, you go to you go to a film, and if it's you and your other partner, you're you're spending some money. And if you got kids, you're putting in some good good amount of dollars there for the movie. So it's got to be a good movie to get me in there. Like Bad Boys isn't one I'm going to want to go and see and spend that kind of money on. I'll watch it on HBO or I'll watch it on Netflix or somewhere else. Um, but like something like we went to see the. Uh, um, Endgame, when Endgame came out, that's like a movie I'll spend money on. That was like enjoyable the whole time through watching the Avengers movie. On Netflix, I watched The Irishman. Good acting, but a damn long movie. I was glad I watched it at home because you'd be pissed if you had to stay awake at the theater for three and a half hours watching that movie. Especially if you go to the bathroom or something, you can't pause at the theater. You're going to miss something, so I prefer at home for most of the movies. 
I said, I don't even have cable. We cut the cord eight years ago. I've been thinking about cutting the cord. I've been trying to get the wife on board with that. There's a few things we watch on TV still, but honestly, if we don't watch TV as much that we probably could cut the cord. Uh, Western's and at home. My theater also has a bar in it, so you're spending a ton. Yeah, we have a bars in ours as well, so you go in there and, you know, you might get a beer or you might get a drink or whatever, which I will say this. When you go to the movie and you do spend, buying, like, a thing of, like, a beer where it's, like, a 28-ounce cup or something like that and it'll cost $10, that's probably one of the better bargains you get at the movie theater because if you were spending that at a bar, it probably would cost you more, like, for the craft beer that our, at least our theater serves. Popcorn overpriced candy overpriced hot dogs overpriced soda overpriced but beer beer is probably pretty spot on for a good deal um never go to the movies waste of coin um i have amazon fire stick. i have a lot of friends that have the amazon fire stick for sure and don't have cable just internet so yeah which really with the internet you can get a lot of the stuff even if you wanted to watch a show on say cable say you wanted to watch a show on fx now they have FX on the internet, so like the next day that show is up or whatever that you can watch it there. So, you know, if you have cable, you can pretty much get what you want. Um, you can get some of the sports stuff on there as well, or you can buy like one of the sports packages and be able to see that on the computer. So, yeah, it's kind of like more of a thing that we're used to right now of having cable, but we don't really need cable, and we just haven't done it yet. We haven't gotten rid of it. I guess it's like more of a traditionalist type thing, but... At some point, I think we will get rid of it because um, we have, you know, we have cable, but then we have Netflix, we have Prime, we have a uh, different time of the year. We'll have Hulu um, that we'll watch some of the Hulu type stuff, and it's like all this stuff adds up. And eat at home before you go. Well, you can do that too, but I don't know. It's like. I think for some people, the way we've been programmed, you're used to actually being in a movie and enjoying a snack when you're at the movie. For instance, when I was in college and my degree was actually in advertising and journalism, we would study some of the things back then and people don't realize, maybe some people know now, but many didn't know back then, they used to splice the film in the beginning back in like the 70s and 80s where they would put in like advertising for like coke so that subliminally you would think about getting a coke while you're at the movie theater and it's kind of funny because back then people wouldn't ask for like you know can i get a soda or can i get a pop most of the time people would ask for a coke it just became subliminal into what you were thinking there um so you people eat at home but people still get the snack type stuff of course, back in the day, we used to, back in high school, we would go to like Ponderosa or something when they had the, like the Grand Buffet, and you would sneak out some of the wings in your girl's purse, and you have her sneak in wings to the movie. <laughs> oh, that was back in the day when you do shady stuff. Oh, man, I once brought Tupperware to Golden Corral. Got, got my money's worth. I didn't even pay for the meal. Brought packet chicken dinner and cooked. How did you? How did they let you get Tupperware in the Golden Corral? I don't even go to Golden Corral because I'm a big guy, and I get bumped out of the way at Golden Corral. So I don't mess around Golden Corral anymore. I mean, you gotta almost wear a mouthpiece nowadays for the people that go to Golden Corral. Uh, roommate ate good that night. Got a three piece of size and cookies for her. <laughs> We're free, baby. They're going to throw it out anyway. Yeah. Well, they're supposed to throw it out, but do we really ever know? That's one of the reasons, like, we have a friend that ran a restaurant, and they asked about some of the other restaurants that do buffets. He said he would never do a buffet because your best food is when it's cooked fresh, and the buffets, it sits around and stuff. So you hope they throw it out, but you never know. They could put it in the cooler and bring it back the next day on some of that stuff. Had a big purse, yeah. <laughs> Advertise the Hidden Persuaders by Vance Packard. I remember that book, yeah. There's a lot of stuff that was done. Like, you know, when you learn advertising, you learn about these different methods that people used. There was a lot of, you could say, shady stuff done. And 
how people will pay and how it all works into the programming. Get a that's right they go to cry. You do, John. I'm serious. It's, it gets bad. Like and you see people come in there with the sweats, like because they know they're going to be there a while. So you know they got their comfortable pants on, which usually you'll see people break out at Thanksgiving. That's like regular wear at a Golden Corral. And when you sit there, sometimes and you watch people, it's almost like people are at a trough. It's just like if you pass a farm with cattle, that's kind of what you're seeing at Golden Corral. Like people just lining up like at a trough. So I just I don't mess with it, man. I don't mess with it. Growing up, we. Only saw musicals at drive-in. I did not really know that movies were different. I first saw Star Wars after basic training. I didn't realize movies could be fun. Yeah. Drive-ins, that's, that's something from back in the day. That was actually a fun event to go to a drive-in. But I remember people used to pack people in the trunk and sneak extra people in as well. <laughs> Let me tell you, Rob, most people are too fat and eat too much. I portion control and eat only what I should. Yeah, most people do overeat for sure. Um, and that's why, you know, we see obesity, obesity rising in the country as well. Uh, I mean, if, obviously if you do moderation, if you can do the workout, you know, if you can work out, like I run a Facebook page, I used to run a Facebook page. I still do. I don't do it as much, but when I used to lift more and do cardio stuff, you know, five days a week, you know, 30 minutes, five days a week makes a big difference. Um. Most people don't. Most people don't have time to do it, though, either. That's part of the problem. Don't ever indulge, ever. No, you eat to your, you don't, some people eat to their, their full rather than to eat until they're satisfied. That makes a difference. But very poor, I know what it means to be really hungry. Yeah, yeah, so you don't want to waste and, you know. The sweets, yeah, they're serious. Oh, well, I've been there twice, it's interesting. Dude, so once they brought out the chocolate fountain, and people bring their kids you know, chocolate fountain, you're thinking, oh, put a strawberry in there, put a, you know, pineapple in there. No, you got kids in there, they'll be putting wings and all kinds of stuff in there and try to see what the chocolate tastes like on it. It's like, that don't go there. Why are you putting that wing in the chocolate fountain? Just, you know, you just got to watch out for that stuff. Still somewhat poor, but thank God for every bite. Yeah, well, even, it's kind of weird. Like, even here, you know, we think about people that actually do struggle you know, you look at some of the homeless type people, just think they still got more than a lot of people in some of the third world countries. They still got a lot more than those people actually have. And they have basically nothing here, but they're still ahead of other people. It's crazy. But that's why it's kind of like, you got to, you know, you've, I always say like if someone helps someone that might be needing help, that's always a great thing. You know, some people don't do it because of whatever reasons. People make their own decision along those lines, but there's a lot of people that are a paycheck away from being that homeless person and you would not want to be in that spot. It's real hunger for sure. And uh I spoke before about I went to volunteer for our company a few weeks ago at a food pantry for one of our charities and helping people get the food they needed and stuff. And walking around, talking to people so they knew what to get and what they could have. And the appreciation they had for getting what they were getting. And the thank yous that they were saying to me is like, I wanted to give them the whole store. I mean, they were just appreciative over the littlest thing that a lot of us take for granted. So, no matter how bad you may think you may have it, just realize there's a lot of people out there that have a lot worse than you do. Um, and it was tough. And I had one person that they brought their family who had a little girl with them who was just so happy that she was able to get like potato chips like she was able to get bags of Lay's potato chips and she was happy to be able to receive that um so we gave her like extra ones and stuff like that she was like four or five years old and it's the biggest smile you could see on a kid she had on her face and it was just like it was sad but then to see her do it, there was like a little bit of happiness she had, but it was just sad knowing that this was happening in this kind of situation. And a lot of those people are just in between on stuff. It's not like they're doing anything terribly bad or whatever. It's just luck did not break their way. Um, the speaker looks like Stormbreaker. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Bring the elastic pants to Golden Corral. <laughs> I even still hang up laundry in the line, saves money. Yeah. Yes, I thank God every night. And I never have asked anyone for a dime. 
Um, yeah, and a lot of people don't. I mean, if you had to ask someone, it doesn't mean you're less of a person or anything, by the way, either. But, um, you know, if people can help, they definitely will, I think. Uh, they have way more than people in the South Sudan. Thanks for spewing facts. Are you welcome? It's just, it's perception. And when you're, when you when you see these things or you read about these things, like someone has a bad, like my wife, she'll say sometimes, she said one time, I was talking about doing, I was doing a beer video and she's like, you know, you're doing all these beer videos. And she's like, you ever realize like, you're doing beer videos and there may be people that come across stuff and like. You're getting all these craft beers, and some people may not be able to get some of these beers. It's like, she's like, you got like first world type things, and it was something I really thought about before on different stuff. And she said that like a while back, and it was kind of like, you know, that's why I tell people like, don't be like a, a beer snob or whatever. Like if someone's drinking a Miller Lite or whatever it may be, your any type of like regular beer, that's fine. If people like it then that's cool. Don't be, you know, a snob or anything about that because you're drinking some pastry stout or something like that and everything. Everybody's got what they want to enjoy or what they can enjoy. Um, you know, you have to put it in perspective for a lot of people. And when she said, I never really thought about that. It's kind of like, you know, my my work big decision on the day might be what beer I might want to try. And other people were, you know, what bill do I want to pay? So you got to keep that kind of stuff in perspective. And I think that's what makes people humble. Uh, I never, uh, let me see, been working since I was 12. Uh, my wife does the same. She's cutting me up. Not too much meat on the bones and underwear. Not comfortable when they can stand up after drying in the cold. <laughs> and guys, I reuse containers. That's good. I always try to reuse containers. Um, in fact, I'm always asking my wife, like, where are the lids? You lost the lids to the containers. That's the only way I don't use them again. It's like the lids get lost or something. Hey, beer man, what is going on? Cheers, my friend. Well, I started out doing a, uh, actually, because you're out in Oregon, I did a review earlier on a Fresh Haze IPA from Deschutes out there where you're at, Beer Man, and then kind of went into a chat, and we've been chatting for a while ever since then. But hopefully you're having a great Friday, my friend. We have a uh, three-day weekend, at least I have a three-day weekend. Hopefully you guys have a three-day weekend um, and, all, and are off on Monday, but... Looking forward to having that extra day in there, so. What are you drinking on, Beer Man, tonight? If you're drinking on anything. And if anybody else has cracked anything open, let me know what you cracked open. You know, it's... It didn't really hit me that well. I mean, it hit me okay. It was an okay beer for me. It's not one that I would probably go back after again. Um, and this was the uh, the fresh haze, and I, I I really enjoy the fresh squeezed, but this one didn't do as much of me. It's kind of like it was decent enough, you know. I'll put it on untapped. I'll probably give it like a three seven five out of five or whatever, which is usually for something like that. But I don't know. It's just can I be? I might be IPA'd out at this point for a while. Um, it just didn't do as much as I thought it was going to do. Uh, sort of, I'm working at LOL. Not now, but this weekend. <laughs> uh, do you have a coupon pencil bag? Uh, DD's asking Dolly. My wife has one. She refuses to miss a deal. <laughs> uh, the Cassie Galaxy Trip and Stellar IPA. Very nice. 45 IPU, seasonal release. Yes, I do. My pride and joy, Dolly said. <laughs> 7%. Okay. Well, that one, this was actually 6.5%, 45 IBU. So not too far off of what you actually have that there. <laughs> right? Oh. And Dolly said she made hers herself. There you go. You must have got some skills from Vanessa Kitty making stuff for yourself there. Yeah, I mean, I went through... A couple months ago, I felt like I just had too, too much IPA to point. Now, when I say IPA out, usually it's more of the newer type IPAs with all the juiciness and all that kind of stuff. Um, I like the classic type things when I get a hold of those. Those are a little bit different because you don't get them as much on a lot of the stuff. But uh, I don't know. It just felt like, you know, the haze craze. I'm not one of the haze bros in that regard. It was kind of like, you know, maybe I'm just going to relax and save the uh, taste buds on that style for a bit 
Never pay retail. That would be a crime. And yes, this diva goes to the thrift store. Well, Dolly, Dolly's getting her own deal. She doesn't need a Rod J deal. She's got Dolly deals going. <laughs> LOL, nice Dolly. <laughs> you got the Dolly deals going. Here's a question, though. Speaking of deals, and I've never done this or whatever, but I've been noticing some videos where people do, like, dumpster diving. Is that something that's common, I guess, like, that people do at certain places? Like, they go to retail stores on certain days when I guess they're getting rid of stuff, and they will dumpster dive in and get stuff that might be just getting thrown away because it's past whatever that store's time may be. Clothes look better than those dummies that pay $50 for a shirt. <laughs> but Dolly, at some point, we have to get you on camera so we can see what you're talking about. <laughs> I've never thought about dumpster diving or seen him. I've never known anybody that's dumpster diving. At least they never told me they did. But it's kind of, I've seen some videos pop up on YouTube when people do that. It made me kind of curious, like, how many people are out there, like, dumpster diving? And if it was... An actual thing that people actually enjoy. Never done it, but they seem to find cool things. All right, yeah, it's like, you know, and sometimes they'll find some of the stuff that are, you know, unopened packages, like stores are cleaning out of Kibra cookies or something, right? So they'll find stuff that they can actually get. Sometimes they'll get, like, stuff for around the house, like, you know, um... Things that could be, you know, utility type things. It might be, you know, I don't say like mops or something like that or anything, but it might be some neat things they'll find that they can actually use for other stuff. Yeah, that's just it. It's just weird. I was like, I don't know. It's like, I never really thought that people, I just don't know. I don't know. And I've seen, I've seen shows on TV where they've done stories on people that dumpster dive. I just, I don't, it just feels weird to me. You know, Dolly says that, that it's disgusting for that, but... Some of these dives they go into, it's not like they're these dirty type trash cans out where you would think of like stuff slopped around. It's just a trash can where it has like unopened packages of stuff. Girl, so I'm a clean freak, old school cleaner, pine saw, and clothes. Very neat person. I hate clutter. Yeah. Got a little OCD going. <laughs> I don't know. I, I can never see myself doing that, but it's just funny when I see some of the videos. It's kind of like, well, that would be savings for people. Most people don't need much, yeah. Yeah, most people don't need much. Most people just want much. Got your like button and shared you out. But, oh, thanks, brother. I appreciate it, Beer Man. Hey, Beer Man, dude, thanks for the, uh, the prizes there. I mean... I did not expect all that stuff that you sent. I'm looking forward to trying those beers. I'm going to drink those this weekend, too. Uh, but it's kind of like I was really blown away by the stuff you said. You'd have to do all that, dude. It's, it was crazy. Um, but if I, most, if I most spend cooling, I go for quality because it has the last. I got a washer for 10 years. I have an older washer as well. I never buy a new phone. I refuse to pay those prices. 150 is my max. A clean freak. I sort of am, but since I clean houses every week, I come home and don't want to. <laughs> I can see that. If you're doing it all day, you don't want to do it when you get home, for sure. It's like I talk on the phone all day. Like, you will never catch me on the phone for the most part just because I've talked to myself out. I'm like, people contact me. Always better to text me rather than call me. <laughs> I yell at my neighbor for throwing crumbs at the purse. <laughs> Do you know probably Yeah, no, it was it was awesome. So I really appreciate it. like being said. Well you got the beer for Santa, my friend, for sure. <laughs> you got the beer to rocking. If the beers are growing, don't come mowing. But no, it was just it blew me away there. So um I am definitely gonna enjoy those and the, the whole caddy and everything. I got the caddy thing back here in front of the Guinness poster, which is really cool. So we got a place here where we can bring our own beer and have barbecue, so I'll definitely use that. Yeah, text her for sure. Yeah, I'm just, I just rather text now than talk. It's like, sometimes when my wife comes home, I'm like, you're not going to talk? I'm like, I feel like I've talked all day long. I just, I'm talked out right now. Can you send me a message? Can you text me? Can you send me a message? 
<laughs> I don't even want to FaceTime because I gotta I gotta talk if I FaceTime. Beer man, you have a good wife. My boyfriend loves me to piss. He says I'm his treasure and he spoils me. Oh, well, that's how it should be. Should be nice that way. Yeah, you should be in a relationship for the long haul and be there to enjoy each other and to, you know, support each other. If you're not, you're probably in the wrong relationship. And that's the truth, Ruth, as they used to say back in the day. And I let him, as long as he is not my money, <laughs> Dolly, you dirty girl, dirty. That little Dolly, all oh, that's nice of him, yeah. Yeah, Dolly, don't, Dolly's got her tricks. look here beer man are you going live tonight by the way well I got you here and if you guys haven't checked out beer man's lives you should they are epic he has some epic lives always a great time if you're going live tonight with it being a weekend I might be able to try to catch some of your stuff later Uh, all right, Dave. Thanks for swinging in, brother. Head into the Matrix, hoping for a good dream. There you go. <laughs> Have a good one, brother. We'll catch up soon. Go into the Matrix. That's hilarious. No, not tonight. Been hanging low, so tired. I got gotcha. you. I can understand that. Well, I've actually been going for a bit. Actually, I have great participation. Love everybody swinging by to check me out tonight and hang out with me for a bit. I'm going to actually go ahead and shut down. And what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to actually jump over to uh, Blake TV to see what those guys got going on. Because Blake is doing a Friday night throwdown. So if you haven't been over to Blake's channel, that's always a good time. Um, always great crew to catch up with there. I would say to definitely think about jumping over if you're going to be on for a bit. And I'm going to put Blake's link here in the chat as well. Oops, let me see. Almost put my stream key into there. You don't want that. I don't want you to have that. That'd be trouble. Someone hijacked my channel. <laughs> But the uh, Blake's channel is there, and that's where they're doing the Friday Night Throwdown. I'm going to jump over. Come on over. You know, tell them hashtag Rajay Raid, and we're going to get over there and laugh a little bit and do some things. Thanks for everybody for swinging in tonight. I will catch you there. I'll probably be back tomorrow for some more live streaming. I'm going to try to do a stream labs live stream tomorrow, I think, because I want to see if it does work right for what I needed to do. And then uh, we will talk soon, if not before. Come join us. All right, guys. I am out, and I will catch you soon. And hopefully, I will see you there. Cheers, everybody. Oh, you didn't know? Your ass better come.